I want to talk about the difference between leadership and management. Um, I should actually be wearing a shirt and tie on this because it fits into the corporate world, but hey ho, I actually do leadership and I don't need to conform to anybody's requirements. There is no dress code. Um, I, I was talking to a friend Rich last night about this because he was on, on about uh, how he gets inspired about the stuff I get up to because there often isn't a safety net for me. I create one, but like quitting work and stuff and finding some of the issues at work, the company tried to do some bad things to me. Um, did I worry about it? The answer is no, because the fact is, this is where leadership management sway. Leadership is where you actually innovate, create, and do something different. You're progressive. You want things to change. You want things to develop. You're not following anybody else. This is why I basically ditched a uh, leadership training program because I looked at it and it's for managers. Managers don't do that. Managers don't know how to innovate. They follow. They have a book. This is what I need to do. This is what I follow. This is what I understand. I can't deviate from that because I just manage with the tools I'm giving. As you've seen with my last video relating to a curtain rail, they would have to hunt down a curtain rail where I sit there and go, how can I create one? That's the difference. you know. Um, and this goes throughout life. And I'm not attacking anybody here, but this is where life is very different for different types of people. If you went to eating, for example, they teach you how to be a leader. They don't teach you how to be a manager because they're not supposed to manage. They're supposed to be the uh, creme de la creme, but also a lot of the people that do go there are village idiots, but at the same time, they're in a position of power through network, etc., which they learn how to work. So even if you're not good at what you're doing, they're trained on how to manipulate that to suit themselves and objectives they need. A bit like Prince Andrew selling arms overseas. Um, now, the average person goes to a normal school where you're told to shut up, don't question what the author said, etc., etc., because you're there to conform. You're not there to think. You're not there to say this isn't correct and historically irrelevant. You're there to follow it and understand what the people that put these books forward for, or anything else, as being the answer to everything. I mean, the bizarre thing with physics is physics is theory, theory anyway. So, in theory, it shouldn't have any boundaries because it's theory. Um, but you still find people follow the same rules and will not question it until somebody right up here comes up and proves it's wrong. And it's not somebody sat in that classroom next to you. But there is a major difference that is relevant to moving anywhere. You know, because I'm sort of stuck between the Philippines and Spain at the moment. Um, the whole point is drive. If you manage, you sit there looking at your pension for retirement. You sit there looking, could I make extra money out my rental or something so I could rent my house out when I move to the Philippines or Spain or whatever. From somebody actually leads, they look to find money everywhere. Um, this week, I've been extremely busy. I'll do an update on the next video. Um, but the point is, it's drive. There is a formula to a lot of this, and this is where you get all these self-help books. And as I mentioned quite regularly, there is some books I recommend, which is Eat That Frog, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and there's a few others I could probably share later. But they, they all follow the same roots, and the, the roots, roots are from leadership. Because natural born leaders are driving things because they naturally think that way. Now, if you want to make the transition to the Philippines, you're going to have to change. You can either sit there for 20 years. Can I, when I say that, I know some of you guys are coming up to retirement and are already ready to make the move. But I know there's a lot of guys that want to make the move, but I've got stuff holding them back. You're going to have to think out the box. You're going to have to change the way you look at things and see how you can make it work for you. I'm in Spain. You know, I've, I've talked about dog food. You know, I've talked about other bits and pieces. I've had a job offer for Saudi Arabia this week. 
there is stuff like that. It doesn't for, for, uh, follow a specific formula. The formula is how I think about it. What comes in doesn't for, follow the same roots. I look at dog food. I look at the fact must be one in three people have a dog here. I don't normally sell dog food. But sorting that distribution out, etc., is where I can make money. I sit here and look at Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia, obviously not the best place to be for a lot of people. But at the same time, depends on the opportunities. I'm not sure if I'll take it or not. Um, I'm quite happy in Spain. And if the dog food pays off, then I'm not going. Simple as that. But I'm also looking at ebooks. Developing YouTube channels because although we've got this one, the Spanish one is also running, and I've started doing tutorials and self help. So there is a lot of stuff that you do thinking out of the box. At the same time, I'm looking at the there's an empty bar that is opposite within two minutes walk from the house, less than that, maybe. And I know. I spoke to a friend of mine yesterday about it and he says, what do you want a bar for? They don't make any money. And I'm like, it's not the bar I'm after. It's the actual location. Why? You're probably wondering. Because how much information and business is done in a bar? If you had somebody wanting to sell a house, for example, or wanted to buy one, they may discuss it in a restaurant or a bar. If you want insurance or somebody to clean your windows, in the UK, most of the stuff used to get done in bars and it sort of moved away to um, probably the 80s and 90s where it become the wine bars and now it's the drunkard bars. But you used to have a community, you know, that, that thing that used to exist in the West. But the, the point is, that's what you want. These locations are key for all that information. The bar could lose money. It doesn't matter. It's not supposed to make money. The... the the, what makes the money is having access to all that information. Information is king. doesn't matter what you're doing, where you're doing it, or what for. It's always going to be the most important thing that you can make money off. So this is all relevant. This is what I'm saying. You, if you manage, you need to change to leading. And it's not impossible. What you find in the Philippines is the ones that can survive with no pension, no nothing else, have already learned the hard way. You know, they may not have been natural born leaders, but they become a leader because they needed food on the table. It's surprising how hard you think when you've got no uh, grub in your belly. It all comes from wanting to progress. So instead of finding ways not to do things, sit there and go, I'm angry that the education system taught me to follow because I don't want to follow I want to lead I want to find a way and I'm gonna find a way and drive yourself forward don't let anything hold you back you find that desire within yourself to say I'm gonna do this and I'm angry that I haven't been given this opportunity within the system because I did it with work I, I quit there and I'm I'm going none of you guys could lead a um, pack of sheep you know is that you know I would I'm not happy here. I'm, I I lead. I'll quite happily drive something forward. But I'm sitting in a room with people that aren't capable of even doing the basics. So, yeah, I angrily do it. That's why when people employ me to fix their companies, I go in there and I'll tell them they've run it badly. I'll tell them I'll fix it. But every time I tell somebody they're doing something badly, I already have the solution. That's the key element. You know, a lot of people go, well, we don't have negativity here. What they mean is they don't want to discuss the fact they're crap at their job. But the reality is it's okay saying you're crap at your job, but turn around and go, okay, you're doing that wrong, but it's fine. You'll find it easier to do it this way. That's the key element. That's leading. Um, obviously, you don't say crap. You just say, I've got this other way that I know will save you a bit of time or actually stop you going bankrupt whatever it is you find a key element that fixes their company and this is why when you're sitting there and going i have a limited budget i if i give 10 years i can do this you've got 10 years do something in the 10 years if you've got spare money what are you doing with your time because one of the things when i'm in the uk i was looking at if i wasn't traveling so much is 
running a small business at the weekends. There's markets, there's car boots, there's eBay, there's all sorts of things that you can make money. You don't have to make big money. The big money comes from small money. So, you know, it doesn't matter if you're making, you're selling widgets online, you make 50 pence per per each item. If you're selling 50,000 a month, it's not too bad. Just get something going that is bringing more money into you every month. That's how the Chinese operate and everybody else that isn't Western <laughs> because they see the opportunity there. You know, if they make that extra profit every month, it builds up doesn't matter how small because it's rolling um, I think I mentioned this about a furniture business I had before when I took the furniture business on it was 450 pounds I paid my ex-partner's brother to take it over within a month well sorry within a week I think it was worth I think it was 1200 or 2100 it was one of the two within one week and it wasn't hard to do and this is the thing is getting out of your comfort zone. Once you go wholesale, for example, you start to realize how much you're overpaying for everything. You know, whether they're sticking 50% on or 150% on. Once you start getting into it, you start to see there's business opportunities everywhere. Um, I know this video has gone on a bit and it's a bit aggressive, but the whole point is I'm trying to motivate some people to say, look, look at what you're doing and how you can make it better because you can. Stop following and start leading, right? Thanks for watching. Yeah.